I don't even know how to start this. Hey everyone, this is me. A lot of you guys have been asking for different longer videos, so I'm gonna do my best with this one. If you like this kind of style, let me know. I'm just gonna be a little bit more laid back. I don't even have a script, so we're gonna see how this goes. Today I'm gonna be doing a Walking Dead Iceberg. It's one that I made myself. I looked online for a good while to see which one I wanted to do. All of them were supremely outdated. The CRM was like in the bottom tier. I think everybody who watches my videos probably knows what the CRM is at this point. So I made my own. I don't know if it's going to be a good one, if it's bad, if it's going to be too short. I don't even know how long this video is going to be. I was going to try and stream this. I still don't quite know how to stream. I'm getting stuff ready for it, so be on the lookout for that in the future. But for right now, this is what it's going to be. Alright, so in my own iceberg, I've broken up the categories. If you don't know what icebergs are, it's a series of trivia and theories on a certain subject. For this video, it's going to be Walking Dead, obviously. So, let me break it down for you. First off, we have the sky. It's stuff and things that probably everybody knows, even if you don't watch the show. Then we have the tip of the iceberg. Stuff you'll know if you've watched the show. Beneath the surface, you'll know it if you're like a fan of The Walking Dead. We're in the deep waters, which means you're a big fan. Even deeper waters means you're a huge fan. Bottom of the iceberg, you're probably a super fan. Uncharted Depths, your whole life is probably dedicated to The Walking Dead. Um, or maybe it's common knowledge. I don't know, I made a lot of this one myself. <laughs> I apologize if you can hear my fridge or my computer. That's running like a jet engine right now. I usually have my headphones on when I do this, but I don't really think that would be pleasant to look at. Still probably not pleasant to look at already, so I apologize. But all right, let's get into the video, starting with the sky. Up first, we have the Carl memes. Obviously, this is how Andrew Lincoln says Carl, his son. Um, the main meme that comes from this is the crying meme. These aren't really so popular anymore. I, I don't know if it's just what I look at. They might be making a bit of a resurgence along with a lot of other Walking Dead memes, but that might just be my For You page. Next up, we have Don't Dead Open Inside, yet another meme. Don't Dead Open Inside, or Don't Open Dead Inside, as it is supposed to be, is what it says on the door in the hospital when Rick first wakes up in the first episode, but because of where the wording is, a lot of people just say Don't Dead Open Inside. Stupid, but it's funny. We have comics, because the show is obviously based on a series of comics. No further explanation there. Along with Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead World Beyond, those are the two spin-off shows from the main show. Again, not much explanation there. Next up we have Walkers. Um, a lot of people in zombie movies call zombies zombies. And in the Walking Dead universe, there's no such thing as zombies. So they call them walkers mostly, but it depends on the group. There's biters and geeks, and in the early seasons they had a lot of different names. Now for some reason it seems like every single community calls them walkers now. It's like a universal term, somehow. Eleven seasons refers to the eleven seasons of the show. Um, yeah. Rick Grimes is alive. Now, recently there's been a lot of talk about that because I think most people who stopped watching the show or just never watched the show uh, assumed that Rick died because he wasn't in the show, but because Rick was in the finale, of course, that's been big news. People are saying, how is Rick alive? And now he's coming back to do his own show. Moving on to the tip of the iceberg, the you'll know if you've watched the show stuff. So up first we have Judith is Shane's daughter. That was a very popular theory for a very long time and then in season 7 episode 4 I believe, uh, Rick tells Michonne that he knows Judith isn't his daughter, he knows that it's his old friend Shane's, but no matter what he is going to treat her like she is his own daughter. There's still no possible way that we could know whether or not she is. Maybe there's going to be some testing or something down the road. Who knows? But as of right now, Rick has accepted that Judith is not actually blood his daughter. But regardless, he's going to treat her that way. That is 
if he ever sees her again. Next up is Walker Variants. Now, for a little bit before Season 11, this was a big talk because in The Walking Dead World Beyond, we saw the first Walker Variant, and then in Season 11, we actually had Variants. So this seems to be like a big plot line in the universe going forward, and if you've watched the show, then you'll know that Walker Variants do, in fact, exist. Daryl isn't in the comics. This is, again, pretty common knowledge, but for those who don't know, Daryl is a character that was created specifically for the show. He, uh, Norman Reedus originally auditioned to be Merle, and the show creators liked him so much that they created Daryl. It's pretty amazing that he is not in the comics at all, considering he went on to be the lead character in the show, so that was a pretty good casting job on Norman Reedus. The new spin-offs refer to Dead City, uh, the Daryl Dixon show, and the untitled Rick and Michonne spin-off. Not a lot of people actually know this, but if you watch the show, then you'll know that they're coming. Like, a lot of people that I talk to who either stopped watching Walking Dead or even watched up to season 11 are saying, like, oh, well, that's kind of a weird way to end it. And I said, well, it's not really ending. There's three new spin-offs. And they had no idea about that, so... Kind of strange, but yeah, those are what the new spinoffs refer to. Everyone is infected. This was, again, a common theory way, way back in, like, season one and two that was confirmed in season two. Um, Dr. Jenner tells Rick that everybody is infected because the virus is airborne, and so this might have something to do with another theory down the list. It's all Rick's dream. This one has been around for a very long time, since at the start of the show, Rick is in a coma. A lot of people think that this is just his hallucination, and he actually is still in the hospital, everybody is still alive, and all the people that he's met over the years are just people um, who work in the hospital. So like Maggie could be a nurse or something like that, and he sees their faces from time to time, so he incorporates that into his own hallucination. I really, really don't think that this one is true, but it's been probably the most popular Walking Dead theory since the show started. Moving on to Beneath the Surface, aka you'll know it if you like The Walking Dead. Everyone is hearing impaired. This was a theory that MatPat posed a couple years ago in one of his videos, saying that because of all the gunfire, a lot of the characters are starting to lose their hearing, which is why a lot of walkers can just sneak up on our characters like there's nothing. <laughs> Don't know how they wouldn't hear them coming, but this was a theory that suggested that they can't hear the walkers sneak up on them, even though they're slow and loud. It's because they don't have all their hearing. This was a fine theory, kind of a like wraparound for a loophole in the show. But um, the main issue with this theory comes with the whisperers. Our characters can hear the whisperers. And if they can hear the whisperers talking, then I don't think that they have hearing impairment. F word takes refers to in like the mid to later seasons starting at season four they did alternate takes to include the F word because uh, you can show people getting slaughtered and mutilated on TV but you cannot say the F word. I think it started in the season four finale where Rick said on TV they're screwing with the wrong people and then in the DVD version he said they are effing with the wrong people instead. The F word takes was a big one when Negan was introduced in the comics. Negan says the F word like every two seconds and they obviously couldn't do that in the show so they filmed an alternate version. You can find it online or in the season six DVD extra of Negan's whole entire introduction speech included with the F word. They did it a few more times in the series, up until season 11, where either they were like, this is our last season, we don't care, or maybe the TV guidelines just uh, kind of relaxed a little bit, because the F word is said like almost in every episode of that season. The CRM. This one was at the bottom of like everybody's lists, but I don't think it's that crazy anymore. 
So the CRM, if you don't know, I have a whole video explaining everything, like every single appearance that they've had in the show, but basically they're the people who took Rick and they're the people that were in featured pretty heavily in Fear the Walking Dead and obviously The Walking Dead World Beyond. Um, they're probably going to be a big um, plotline going forward in the spinoff shows. Definitely the Rick and Michonne show, they're the people who have him captured, so yeah. Glenn's death foreshadowed. Now, a lot of people know about uh, this one. It's because when they attacked the satellite station in Not Tomorrow Yet, season six, episode 12, Glenn sees the Polaroid pictures on the wall of people with their heads bashed in, but it was also foreshadowed before that in Terminus, where Glenn almost gets hit in the head with a baseball bat, which would, as we all know, go on to be his ultimate cause of death. France refers to the fact that in season one when they were at the CDC, Dr. Jenner says that France is still secure and they're looking to make a cure. And we know from The Walking Dead World Beyond that's not true because that's where the first variant walker was seen. But where this additionally lands on this list is that the Daryl Dixon spinoff is taking place in France. Why is it? How does he get there? Your guess is as good as mine. The day will come when you won't be, or TDWCWHWB, is what Dr. Jenner said to Rick when he let them out of the CDC. Rick said, I'm grateful that you're letting us leave and not murdering us. And now the reason why this is on the list is because the day will come when you won't be is the episode title of season seven, episode one, AKA Glenn and Abraham's deaths. So basically it's implying that Rick was grateful that he let them out so that way they could survive all the way up until season seven, episode one, or the day that Rick was no longer grateful. The Lone Walker. Now this one has been on icebergs for a very long time. Usually it's at the bottom, but because it's at the bottom of everybody else's, I think everybody has probably heard this before. So I'm gonna move it up a little bit. There's a lot of different uh, theories and explanations for the Lone Walker. A lot of them say that it represents Shane back in season two because he was uh, alone basically and out of, he was the outsider of the group. Some people say it represents humanity or nature because now walkers are part of nature and humanity is just gonna become part of nature. And some people say that it's gonna be Rick. People say that that is a time traveling walker of Rick. I'm not kidding. When I was researching this video, I saw somebody say that. I don't think that, but I found it. A and B refers, uh, I probably should have put this up with the CRM, but A and B refers to uh, when Jadis was trading people, she would call them either an A or a B, and then in The Walking Dead World Beyond, she it was kind of clarified that A's are people who are recently bitten, and B's are workers for the CRM. Where this goes further is that A, there have been signs of the letter A everywhere across like all seasons of The Walking Dead. It was the train car in Terminus, it's on Rick's hand in season six, it was on Daryl when he was captured by Negan. There's plenty more, but it is just weird that A's have been everywhere. B's haven't though, so that is strange. Alternate Negan kills refers to the fact that when season seven was coming out and everybody was wondering who Negan was gonna kill, the um, production said that they filmed everybody dying and they had a take of everybody um, getting killed so that way leaks wouldn't spread didn't really do a great job because leaks spread like crazy, but they said that they filmed everybody's deaths and there was actually a pretty uh, legit leak of Maggie dying. It was not just the one hit that they all have in the episode, but it was uh, an actual scene where Maggie is the one that gets killed. I actually don't know, I probably should have looked that up. I don't know if that's on like the season six DVD extra, but I remember there was like a leaked video that was like shot on somebody's like iPhone one of Maggie being killed. And I haven't seen it anywhere else since that, but um, I don't think that they actually did record and film everybody's death scenes. I think that they did the, they're in the episode and everybody, Rick has like a flash that everybody else is gonna get hit. I think that's what they mean when they said that they filmed everybody dying, but there was that leaked Maggie death 
and I haven't seen that anywhere else. So they very well could have filmed everybody dying. I just haven't seen it anywhere. If you have, let me know that down in the comments below. Carol's Kids refers to uh, really Carol's cookbook where she sees all of the kids that she's taken care of over the years have died pretty brutal deaths. It's actually pretty unfortunate. Every single kid that Carol takes care of eventually dies. At the end of season 11, Daryl leaves to go and look for Rick and Michonne, and I think he leaves the kids uh, with Carol. I, if I was Daryl, I probably would have left them with Ezekiel, Aaron, anybody else but Carol, because odds are by the time Daryl gets back, Judith and RJ will probably be dead. Moving into the deep waters, which means that you're a big fan of the show. Daryl is a virgin. Um, this refers to the fact that Daryl doesn't have any kind of love interest up until Leah in season 10, and we never see them do the deed, it's implied, but a lot of people think that Daryl is a virgin because he doesn't seem romantically interested in anybody. This also pairs with the theory that he's gay or asexual. A while ago, it was a big theory that Daryl is going to be gay. Norman Reedus even talked about this theory. I wouldn't say that Daryl is a virgin, but he definitely didn't, he wasn't uh, a big love interest guy in the show, I guess. <laughs> Beta is a celebrity, it refers to the fact that Beta, in both the comics and the show, was a celebrity. In the show, he was a country singer, I believe. Season 10, it's revealed that he was a country singer. He plays his own music. And then when he dies and he takes off his mask, Negan actually recognizes him to be somebody famous. I saw somebody in the comments say that they missed this somehow. And they were like, oh, well, why did Negan seem afraid of him? I said, I don't really think Negan was afraid per se, but imagine we're all years into the zombie apocalypse and this big dude who's been trying to kill you eventually takes off his mask and it's Brad Pitt. We would all be just as surprised and probably a little hurt if I'm being honest. Space Spore refers to uh, what Robert Kirkman tweeted to a fan when they asked how the virus started. He said, Space Spore. So basically this means that the virus uh, either came from space, um, from some distant planet, or maybe aliens uh, placed it on Earth for this to totally happen. I really don't think that we'll ever get any further like in show or in universe explanation to this that's not really what the show is about unless they wanted to go with like some huge wtf ending for the tv shows uh and have aliens attack at the end i don't know maybe robert kirkman will elaborate on this further in a couple years or something like that but as of right now that's the theory Dale's death. So Dale's death refers to Jeffrey DeMunn, the actor who played Dale. Uh, he asked to be killed off the show because of Frank Darabont's firing. Uh, Jeffrey DeMunn and Frank Darabont are great friends in real life, and I think uh, Jeffrey DeMunn said that if he's going to be fired, I don't want to be here. Invincible references. So uh, if you guys don't know, Invincible is a fantastic show on Amazon. It's also based on a series of comics by Robert Kirkman. And there are several different Invincible references in the show. Uh, I think RJ is wearing a, uh, an Invincible shirt in one of season 11's episodes. And then also in season six, um, Sam Anderson is playing with Invincible action figures. If you haven't seen Invincible, go check it out. Lori's body. So Lori's body refers to the fact that a walker in season three seemingly ate her entire body, bones and all, because when Rick went to go look for her, there was a zombie who had a very full belly and there was no body of Lori anywhere. Some people have said that she actually isn't dead and that she just got up and walked away and left everybody, I guess. But really, it's the fact that there was no bones, so this walker, I guess, ate the bones of Lori, and we've never seen any other walkers do that. 382,000 is the number of people that are still alive in the universe, and it's definitely uh, a lot less than that after many different wars that our characters have been through. <laughs> they probably themselves have clocked down that number like by another like 2,000, so I'd say probably like 380,000. 
uh, just by our group alone. After that, there are probably so many different other groups, and there's obviously everything that happens in Fear and World Beyond, so I'd say this is probably around like 300,000, if that. Rick is immune. Uh, this is another very popular theory, the fact that Rick was in the coma before um, the apocalypse started and after that he woke up uh people say that his brain since it turned on and off again that he's immune to the virus some other people think that rick his blood just is the key to a cure and so people are saying well why did carl die then if he got bit that's exactly what i say and then some people say that oh well if he's immune then judith should be immune and no that also is probably not true either because like we went over earlier in the video judith is shane's daughter not rick's probably this could very well be the plot of the rick and michonne spinoff uh, a lot of people i think it's like pretty 50 50 on whether or not they want rick to be the cure or if they just want him to be a regular guy <laughs> Breaking Bad connection refers to in season one, uh, when Merle is on the rooftop, he has a bag of blue meth, which is what Walter White is famous for making in Breaking Bad. So some people think that this is part of a shared universe. It might be, that might get a little bit tricky though, for reasons I'll explain later. Season five sanctuary poster refers to this poster from season five, where if you look over here in the corner, you can see the sanctuary there. This is a really cool Easter egg because for fans of the comics, they knew exactly what this place was and when it was coming. So the sanctuary isn't even in season five at all. It's not even in season six, but that was cool that they were planning on and teasing it its introduction all the way back in season five even deeper waters means you're a huge fan of the show starting off we have johnny depp's head johnny depp's head was used in the satellite station episode uh not tomorrow yet season six episode 12 it's this head right here uh it was definitely just a prop that was left over from one of his previous movies and it looked like gregory a little bit so they used it in the show or who knows, maybe in a universe, this is how old Johnny Depp was, and that could actually be Johnny Depp. Carol killed the Andersons. So, obviously she didn't uh, murder them, but her words to Sam inadvertently ended up killing them all. She gave him some horror stories about the walkers and said that they would rip him to pieces, and when he was out walking with the rest of the group, he thought back to her words, and he got scared and it ended up killing him, his brother, and his mother. Vatos refers to the Vatos group in season one. A lot of people ask what happened to them, did they end up surviving or not. There's a deleted scene that shows that they did get overrun by walkers, but since that was deleted, a lot of people think that the Vatos are gonna come back somehow. If we didn't see them die on screen, then they might not be dead. Heath refers to Heath, who was um, last seen in season seven, episode six, and just never seen or heard from again. It's been confirmed by Angela Kang that uh, Heath was taken by Jadis and traded to the CRM. So a lot of people are hoping for a, another um, scene or maybe he's gonna be part of the Rick and Michonne show. Just some sort of explanation involving Heath because this has been a very popular one. Everybody wants to know why Heath is gone. I don't even know why. Heath was not a huge character. I think it was just because they forgot about him and he mis like disappeared pretty mysteriously. So a lot of people are still wondering where he is. It's all going to be up to if the actor wants to return or not. So we'll see if Corey Hawkins wants to be Heath again. Going along with Heath is the PPP card. Uh, Tara found this card where uh, around tire tracks where Heath was taken, and for a while, this was all that there was, this weird card. The running theory was that this was um, the writer's kind of mistake because this was supposed to be the logo of the CRM, and this was like their first appearance technically but they changed the crm logo to the three rings and that was all fine and well it was just kind of a throwaway thing until tales of the walking dead where we see the ppp card again so what does this have to do with anything we don't know yet could this still be in reference to the crm 
Absolutely. Could it just be an Easter egg referencing that card because fans have been asking about it for a very long time? Absolutely, and probably. Death Dinner refers to the fact that every single time one of the principal cast members gets killed off, they get a death dinner on set. It's just a nice farewell, it's their last supper before they leave the show. Pretty cool tradition because in this show, a lot of main characters do get killed off over the years. Dwayne Jones Whiskey refers to this whiskey right here that Aaron and Father Gabriel are seen drinking, and a lot of people think that this is a reference to Dwayne Jones, Morgan's son. This is in reference to what I said earlier about how if we don't see a character die, then they could still be alive. So a lot of people were thinking that having Dwayne Jones whiskey there was a uh, hint that Dwayne was also coming back. Daryl's bike refers to the fact that, especially in like seasons 9 and 10, uh, Daryl's bike never seems to run out of gas when all other cars and everything else does. So the question is, where does he get this gas from? Hallucinations refers to not the uh, Rick's coma theory, but the fact that Rick and a few other characters have had a lot of hallucinations throughout the show. Especially Rick, um, there was when he went crazy, seeing Lori everywhere, and then obviously in his final episode, he had hallucinations of Shane, uh, Herschel, and Sasha for some reason. But uh, Rick has also had hallucinations of Shane before, after he died. Not only is it Rick, but Tyrese also had a lot of hallucinations in his final episode of Beth and the Governor. And so this theory is that what is in the air that gives people these hallucinations. Since Rick has them a lot, does this have anything to do with his sort of immunity? This might be looking too deeply into the show. This might just be a way to bring back some former characters, which it probably is, but it's still cool nonetheless. X-Files connection refers to the cigarettes that Daryl holds right here. Uh, it's apparently the same cigarettes from the TV show, The X-Files. I don't know, I've never seen it. So very similar to the Breaking Bad uh, connection, the theory here is that The X-Files and The Walking Dead share the same universe. Orange Backpack refers to the fact that there's been several different orange backpacks throughout the years, and a lot of people think of it as a curse. It usually means that trouble's ahead, or one of our characters is gonna die. Um, it's kind of like the oranges from The Godfather. Mostly everybody who carries this thing, or at least is seen with it around them at some point, pr uh, dies shortly after. Is there any merit to this theory? Absolutely. I won't get too in-depth right now about it, but um, if you haven't noticed the orange backpacks, and you're doing a rewatch right now or something like that, keep an eye out for the orange backpack because somebody's gonna die. We're at the bottom of the iceberg now, which means that you're probably a super fan of The Walking Dead. Beth saw Lucille. So in Beth and Daryl's episode in season four, Beth sees a group of people who have been killed or a group of walkers who have been killed. And among this group is a barbed wire baseball bat. So was this actually Lucille, or was this just another hint at what's coming? I think that this is a very cool easter egg, I think it is just an easter egg, but if they wanted to somehow retcon the fact that Negan was there and killed people and then just left Lucille lying around, sure, why not? Carl predicted the future. Carl didn't look into like a crystal ball or anything, but in his in season eight, his visions for the future show that Negan and Judith are very good pals, and this would eventually actually come true. A lot of Carl's other visions for the future, like the communities living together in peace, did also si uh, semi kind of come true, but this one for sure absolutely came true. Rick and company are the villains. A lot of people get mad at me whenever I bring this up, but the truth of the matter is that Rick and the group are the villains from a certain point of view. If you're a savior and you believe in Negan and everything that he's doing, then yes, Rick and the company are the villains. If you're a whisperer, you believe that Alpha is correct in everything that she's doing, then yes, not Rick, but the company is definitely the villains. I think this is also further brought on by the fact Season 6, Episode 12, not tomorrow yet. I think that's the third time I've mentioned that episode in this iceberg. I didn't realize that I would be doing that, but they went and attacked Negan's people first, which was 
a first for them. They usually kill in reaction to people attacking them. They never have attacked other people before that. So uh, that just kind of, a lot of people said that, maybe not a lot of people, but I made a video on it and people had a lot of disagreements. Some people agreed though, that um, that was the point where the group kind of, it was their point of no return. Axel's original arc refers to this character, Axel and the prison. Originally, he was written and he was going to be a serial killer who kills Beth. There's even still some hints of this, of his like serial killer vibe in the show. When you rewatch the episodes, it's kind of funny that he was acting one way and then they were like, oh, never mind, we're not doing this, so act a different way. There's a very clear 180 in his performance. It's kind of funny if you go back and watch it. But yeah, they said that because the governor was already a villain, they didn't want to have another side villain just to have one, which I actually respect. Um, it might have been a cool arc to see play out, but if it was just unnecessary drama, then I'm glad that they cut it. Eugene sex scene refers to uh, a cut Eugene sex scene in season eight. It was gonna be with uh, Eugene and Laura. It was gonna be right after the walkers start attacking uh, the sanctuary and they were just gonna say, well, we're dying anyway, so let's do it. I think both actors have gone on record saying they're happy that the scene was cut. They didn't like it. And um, maybe that's another reason why it was just cut in the first place. Maybe it wasn't acted particularly well. Cancelled Rick movies refers to the fact that we were supposed to get a theatrical Rick Grimes movie trilogy before his it was turned into a the Rick and Michonne TV show. Um, I always had trouble believing that this, that this was actually going to happen. Um, I just can't see a lot of people going to the theater to see a Rick Grimes movie trilogy if they haven't watched The Walking Dead, so that already limits your audience quite a bit because movies are supposed to be like, oh, let's go to the movies and, and watch this. Maybe not so much anymore with like Marvel, you have to have like a PhD in Marvel knowledge in order to understand anything going on, but um, yeah, before it was supposed to be you go to the movies, watch this, but if it was going to be about Rick and the CRM, so many people who would have went to go see that having not watched The Walking Dead would be so confused. I never really saw this actually happening. I saw them as being TV movies, maybe, but I, for one, am actually happy that we're not getting these movies anymore. I don't think they would have been great. I don't think that they would have really made a whole lot of sense, and I think TV shows... The Walking Dead is a TV show. Let's, let's keep it as a TV show. TV shows give you more time to develop the characters and the storylines. I much prefer the direction that they're going in now. Morgan Saw Whispers refers to the season three episode Clear, where uh, Rick meets Morgan again, and Morgan's totally insane. And he says that he has seen um, people wearing the dead people's faces, or something along those lines. Well, later on in the show, we do, in fact, see people wearing the dead people's faces. So uh, I've looked this one up quite a bit. Nobody really seems to have any clear explanation on whether it was um, a hint at what's coming in the future or if it was just a nod to the comics at that point. Um, I don't actually think that Morgan saw the whispers. I don't think that timeline adds up very well, but if he did, I think that's uh, a really cool, even if it's just an Easter egg, still really cool. and headcanon we can say that Morgan saw the Whisperers first because Morgan never actually meets the Whisperers so maybe he did before everybody else even knew it. The Uncharted Depths which um, either means that you're like me and you make videos on The Walking Dead or just watch a whole lot of it and um, or maybe you're just a really huge fan but maybe these are all just common knowledge too. I made most of these up, um, not all of them, but most of them are pretty new theories and these are ones that I didn't see on anybody's lists or anything like that, but I've seen them talked about a lot in my comment section and just around the internet, so let's get into it. The Commonwealth knows the CRM. Uh, all throughout season 11 there were, really not all of season 11, but season 11 part 3, there were a lot of hints that um, 
the Commonwealth knows of some greater presence or something like that. Lance says to Pamela that he's very important for keeping the partnerships of the Commonwealth alive. A lot of people thought that was in reference to the CRM. They also said that they were going to take Connie to Designation 2, which is a place that's far away and we never see those people ever again. So we never got any answers to these questions. Um, do I see in the future uh, this plotline coming back? Probably not, but maybe as like a throwaway reference, Rick will find some paperwork on Lance Hornsby or something like that. It would be kind of cheap, but uh, anything is good at this point. Babies are immune. So this is what I was talking about earlier when it comes to everybody in, is infected. Um, everybody who was born after the apocalypse started, uh, the theory is that because they were in their mother's womb for a certain period of time and the mother is infected, then uh, the babies grew um, a sort of hormone or something that would allow them to block out the virus or they evolved and um, they're immune. There's no way to know this right now. Um, we haven't seen a kid die uh, that's been born after the apocalypse. So at least I don't think we have. This is not one that I made up. This is one that I saw on other people's lists. So if this is wrong, don't yell at me. This could be a very cool plot line. Um, I've heard that in Fear the Walking Dead, uh, there's a guy named Padre who's stealing kids and also in uh, The Walking Dead Dead City, it said that Herschel is gonna be captured. So maybe this is where the storylines are heading and the all the babies that were born during the apocalypse are immune, so they wanna test them or something like that. I think that would be a very cool plot line to uh, go forward. I think it would make a lot more sense than like Rick being immune and uh, would be pretty cool for just the entire universe going forward because the stakes would all be very personal to all of our characters. They don't want the kids to be tested on. It would be very much uh, maybe like The Last of Us a little bit, but slight spoiler there, I guess. Rick versus Morgan. This is one that I've seen recently. Um, Fear the Walking Dead is still years behind where... The Walking Dead is time-wise so in this final season of fear there's gonna be a massive time jump and some people think that Morgan is going to join up with the CRM and he's going to be going against Rick for some reason um, in season six of The Walking Dead proper there was a lot of hints at that like Morgan and Rick would fight one another they would be butting heads the whole season that didn't happen that was just like a misdirection but uh some people think that that could happen now and morgan's gonna uh take up the ideals of the crm for some reason and uh rick is gonna have to go against him might be cool depending on how it's done it was rick and morgan there from the start for them to turn into enemies would either be cool or really really stupid negan and maggie refers to the fact that some crazy people want Negan and Maggie to romantically be together. Um, I have no words for this theory. I genuinely, genuinely hope it does not happen. If it does happen, I will probably not watch Dead City any further. Um, it's just the most preposterous thing. Yes, the actors have great chemistry. They're great actors, um, but I don't see their relationship as romantic at all if somebody brutally like bashed in my girlfriend's head with a barbed wire baseball bat and then made fun of it while it was happening i could never ever see myself falling in love with that person it's just insane thought process um i know that they are two of the most beloved characters in the show but they don't have to be in love that's not what every guy-girl relationship has to be. To go along with that one, kind of, there is Herschel Jr. is going to kill Negan. So uh, when Negan saves Herschel Jr. in season 11, he finds out that Negan is the one who killed his father. And so Negan tells him that when he's older, uh, when, they're, when he's ready, then they'll square it out. What does this mean? It's pretty vague, but um, I can 100% see this happening. I think this makes the most sense, and um, I think that 
it'll come probably in Dead City, maybe in the first season, I hope not. But uh, I do want Negan and Rick to somehow meet up again. I can see Maggie being saddened by this, not because they are romantically linked together in any way, but because Negan went on this journey with her to get Herschel Jr. back, and Herschel Jr. repays him by killing him. And also, she would probably be upset because she knows this whole cycle of violence is just gonna continue. She doesn't want that for Herschel Jr., and Negan doesn't either. But I think Negan will accept his fate when it does eventually come. The Cure refers to the Cure in the universe. I kind of went over this with the babies are immune thing. They could be stealing kids to um, test on them and try and make a cure out of them. Maybe that's why Rick has been gone for so long. There's, I think, the direction the universe is heading. Um, a cure is certainly going to be brought up at some point. Uh, we're definitely, we're not reaching the end of the Walking Dead universe, but it's definitely the beginning of the end. And I think the beginning of the end is going to introduce this cure uh, plotline as the sort of potential the Walking Dead end game type of deal. The helicopter voice. So the helicopter voice refers to uh, the ending scene of season 11 where there's somebody on the helicopter talking to Rick saying um, there's no escape for the living and all this and he said he mentions Rick by name he talks directly to him and if you listen closely this voice sounds a lot like Giancarlo Espinoza. I didn't hear it at first but the more times I listened to it uh, the more times I can not hear anybody else. It's it's him. <laughs> it, it's the only voice that I can hear. Um, and so I think potentially Giancarlo Espinosa is going to be playing the villain of the... Probably the whole entire Walking Dead universe going forward. He might be the leader of the CRM. I think that would be great. But this does put a damper on those people's... Uh, Breaking Bad connections theory, because if this is Giancarlo Espinosa, then it can't be Gus Fring from Breaking Bad. Maybe it's his twin brother, who knows, but uh, go listen to it again, you'll see what I mean, listen to his voice, and uh, you'll see that it definitely is him. So I really, really hope that he will end up joining this universe. He would be, he obviously is a phenomenal actor, and he plays every villain, like, ever, <laughs> so why not join The Walking Dead as a villain, too? No Reunions refers to the fact that uh, in all these spinoff shows, Dead City, Daryl Dixon, and Rick and Michonne, um, they're just going to be one season, they're going to tell their own story, and that'll be the end of The Walking Dead. And Rick will never return to his family, he'll never see Daryl again, he'll never see how Negan has been redeemed. Um, and that's uh, a very sad note to think about. Some people think that uh, this is the way that um, The Walking Dead is going to be, and there is no reunions that are ever going to happen. On a slightly uh, lighter note, the last theory on this list is Season 12. So Season 12 refers to the fact that after these spinoff shows, uh, either one season, two season, five season, 10 season, um, there's going to be a final season 12 of The Walking Dead. And it's gonna have everybody in it. It's gonna be Rick in the group versus Giancarlo Espinosa and the CRM. Um, and I think this, I almost actually had these flipped. I had season 12 and then no reunions, but I wanted to end this video on a, a slightly brighter note. Um, I personally hope, I don't know if it'll be actually season 12. It might be like a Walking Dead TV movie or something like that. That I would be fine with, but um, I think that the idea that there won't be any reunions between, especially Rick and Daryl, come on now. Like, uh, they have to see each other again. The Walking Dead will just be like 12, 13, 14 years of nothing if Rick doesn't reunite with his family. And that's my Walking Dead iceberg. Um, this has been a fun video to make, uh, very different. I didn't write a script for this. I didn't do anything. I made the iceberg, obviously, but um, I usually have a very scripted 
kind of format. You might notice that like my I've been talking differently. This is also my first time doing this, so if I repeat myself a few times in this video or I don't, I'm not really making a whole lot of sense, just bear with me. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so. But if you enjoyed this video, let me know that in the comments below. This was uh, fun to make. This is not gonna be supremely difficult to edit, I hope. Um, and I would love to make another video like this, maybe some more uh, icebergs or other long form, kind of more relaxed content. Like I said uh, in the opening, I don't actually know if I said this in the opening, but um, I was originally gonna stream this. I don't have everything I need to stream. Uh, you can also probably hear my laptop about ready to take flight, it sounds like. I need to get a new computer before I start streaming. This one is old and is barely hanging on by a thread. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, uh, let me know that. Like the video, comment, uh, subscribe, all that good stuff. Also, um, as of today, I don't know when I'll be posting this video, but today I've reached uh, 50,000 subscribers, and that is cool. I started actually making videos during the pandemic of 2020, and uh, it turns out YouTube was a little bit more difficult than I would have thought. I made videos all throughout 2020, all throughout 2021, and then in at the beginning of 2022, uh, things kind of started to pick up. I had 600 subscribers, 600 and some change subscribers at the beginning of 2022, and now in January of 2023, I just hit... 50,000 subscribers. So that's pretty cool. I want to thank you guys uh, very much for that. I uh, don't, I, I wouldn't be here without you. I know so many people say that and I have heard so many YouTubers and like celebrities say, oh, thank you. It's, it's all because of my fans. It's all because of you guys. And it just sounded so like insincere to me. But now I'm kind of in this position where I, I am. I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful that uh, this is my job now. And um, I don't really have anything else to say for that other than thank you. So I know how it might sound insincere or something like that because I've said that when other people say it, but truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. All right, I won't keep you any longer. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I've been recording for like an hour and a half. So this video will probably be like an hour long. Um, you asked for longer videos, there you go.